All right, y'all. So we're back with some more Bitcoin game and insights. Let's just jump straight into it, y'all. Y'all already know. So if you really want freedom, you want to smell the volcano of freedom, move to El Salvador, do, you know, uh, what Ayn Rand suggested. If you're not treated well in your country, leave. Get the fuck out. Go to a real country like El Salvador with a real leader, with real people, and real entrepreneurialism. Fuck the U.S. You know, they're not giving you what you want. You don't get freedom of speech. You don't get freedom of expression. You don't get freedom of or, or any kind of freedom. You know, I mean, it sounds crazy to say it. my man's is super animated right now, but I mean, he, he's making some points. He's kind of cooking. He, I, I can see him cooking a little bit. I mean, it sounds wild to hear it like this, but I mean, I, I get I feel the energy. Move with your feet. The voting not going to get you nothing. Walk out. You don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you, Donald. So, you know, you've got to come to the Bitcoin side. You know, you've got to get in line. Um, you've got to bend the knee, which you probably are not going to be able to do. Uh, you certainly won't hear much uh, out of one ear. Too soon? Well, it's a rough world, okay? Bitcoin <laughs> fixes this. It demonetizes violence. Renowned financial and crypto journalist Max Kaiser was recently interviewed by Natalie Brunel about El Salvador's acceptance of Bitcoin as legal tender at the recently concluded Bitcoin conference. Max Kaiser talked about the changes taking place in the nation discussed the worldwide implications of Bitcoin adoption, and responded to remarks made by Donald Trump during the 2024 Bitcoin conference. Max Kaiser talked about how El Salvador's President Bukele is becoming more well-known worldwide due to the country's legalization of Bitcoin. Because it accepted Bitcoin, he referred to El Salvador as a shining city on a hill and a beacon of freedom. Kaiser's criticism of Trump stems from the former president's negative remarks toward President Nayib Bukele of El Salvador, a renowned Bitcoin supporter and the first government leader to declare the cryptocurrency a legal tender. Trump, speaking at the GOP convention, claimed Bukele was unworthy of U.S. attention and accused him of offloading criminals to the U.S. Trump's criticism of Bukele surprised many Bitcoin supporters, including Kaiser who had hoped that Trump's newfound support for Bitcoin would foster a connection between them. Watch clips from the interview for further insights into Max Kaiser's conversation with Natalie Brunel. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more content. Enjoy the video. President Bukele gave a speech, Donald Trump gave a speech, and who was everyone talking about? President Bukele. So Donald Trump like, you know, got a little jealous. And he's like, oh, I got to, you know, talk this guy down. But President Bukele is the most popular leader in the world right now. Bitcoin is legal in El Salvador, and it is the new shining city on a hill. El Salvador is the first country out of yeah. the turning. You know, right? El Salvador is a beacon of freedom. Uh, El Salvador is uh, put, already put Bitcoin on their reserve. All these uh, politicians are up here saying we're going to put it on our reserve. Well, guess what, folks? They're lying because they're held in the pockets of the central bankers and Jamie Dimon and uh, all these uh, folks are, are not going to let them do that. Uh, so if you really want freedom, you want to smell the volcano of freedom, move to El Salvador, do, you know, uh, what Ayn Rand suggested. If you're not treated... I, I mean, I know stuff is heavily manipulated here, but I, I what I believe is that you're, if they don't start to fall in line, they're going to start to fall apart. Like that, that's just what it comes down to. Bitcoin is going to take over the world and Bitcoin is going to bring a drastic change. So if they're not taking the steps to make this stuff happen, to start integrating and to be a part of it, they're going to get steamrolled by the people doing it. So, I mean, it, it's only a matter of time. So I believe that they, they are going to make this stuff happen for that reason. I don't think that it's not about what they want to happen. I don't think that they would want to happen. I don't think they would want people to have more control or anything like that. I don't think this is how they they wanted things to play out whatsoever. But I think that's the power of the technology. That's the power of where we are at this point in history. It's like it's not about what what these small groups of pe people with this control and power. It's not about what they want. They have to figure out ways to sit here and push their agenda while playing by the rules of this new developing world. And I think that that's that's what's so powerful about Bitcoin. So um trying to find places where their heart is in the right place and stuff like that. I mean, you you never know. Like, you never know where someone's heart is. So yeah, while some cities may be adopting it faster than others, that doesn't mean I'm just jumping on board with those cities either because, I mean, you, you don't know someone's true intentions or someone's true reasons why. 
Um, as long as you're getting the results that you're looking for, that's what I care about. The results. The, does this? Does these decisions and what's playing out? Does this result in me getting what I want? Like that. That's what it comes down to, for me personally. Well, in your country, leave. Get the f out. Go to a real country like El Salvador with a real leader, with real people, and real entrepreneurialism. F the U.S. You know, they're not giving you what you want. You don't get freedom of speech. You don't get freedom of expression. You don't get freedom of or any kind of freedom. You know, move with your feet. The voting, not going to get you nothing. Walk out. Why is what President Trump said wrong? Because he suggested that the president and El Salvador were dumping criminals over the border into the U.S. Not only is that materially and factually wrong, but it's highly offensive because the MS-13 gang was birthed in Los Angeles, and then the Clintons dumped them in El Salvador, and they went on to kill tens of thousands of Salvadorans. So, you know, that is highly offensive to suggest that uh, the opposite is true, okay? So you know, it, that's why I got my dander up, because it's not just being cute. He's just not trying to be a rival at the sorority cotillion like oh he's got a better dress than I do and being a bitch he's making factual errors he's saying the wrong thing and he's insulting tens of thousands and millions of Salvadorans and the Salvadorans made Bitcoin legal tender Salvadorans are the beacon of free speech the Statue of Liberty is now a volcano in El Salvador so you know get in line pal and let me tell you something you don't change Bitcoin Bitcoin changes you Donald so you know you've got to come to the Bitcoin side you know you've got to get in line um, You've got to bend the knee, which you probably are not going to be able to do. Uh, you certainly won't hear much uh, out of one ear. Too soon? Well, it's a rough world, okay? Bitcoin fixes this. It demonetizes violence. Show a little. Do you have a little love you want to show for I Trump? I do. I have a special flower for Donald Trump. When I see him, I'd like to present this flower and express my love and gratitude for at least rise, raising the political game in America to a new standard of forthrightness and truthfulness. And I, I'm a big Trump supporter, and I am voting for Trump for a third time coming up in this next election. But my man said all that to say he voting for Trump is crazy. Like, what did I just listen to right now, bro? Hey, this guy, this guy's amped up. What is he on right now? I mean, it's, it's funny, but like, what's going on? Like, this that was crazy. You know, Trump is from New York. I'm from New York, and so we. Sp speak like New Yorkers. So, you know, this is how we do it in New York. And uh, that's the way it is. Max Kaiser praises El Salvador as a beacon of freedom for legalizing Bitcoin and calls on President Trump to support the cryptocurrency. He views Bitcoin as crucial for nations to thrive in the evolving global landscape, likening its adoption to a global hash war among countries vying for dominance. Kaiser believes Bitcoin could eventually replace traditional nation states and central banks with decentralized governance. He uses El Salvador's Bitcoin approach under President Bukele as a model and describes Bitcoin as a magic mirror, reflecting individuals' true nature. Kaiser emphasizes the need for genuine engagement with Bitcoin and plans to launch a Bitcoin bank for borrowing against crypto holdings. Let's go back to the interview and watch more clips to gain insights from Max Kaiser. The analogy that I like is Bitcoin as gunpowder. So um, the, if one country adopts gunpowder, then you really have to adopt gunpowder as well to get into this um, paradigm of uh, mutual assured destruction or survival. And now we're entering into the global hash war or the global Bitcoin war, which I wrote about five years ago, when everyone was saying that, oh, all these countries are going to ban Bitcoin. I said, no, in fact, it's the opposite. They're all going to embrace Bitcoin. They're going to competitively mine Bitcoin and hoard Bitcoin uh, because it becomes a new uh, back global Bitcoin standard. And we'll see every fiat money go to its long-term value of zero. Uh, it's demonetizing gold. You see that in the ETF market. People are dumping gold ETFs and buying Bitcoin ETFs. It's demonetizing the stock market. It's demonetizing the bond market. It's demonetizing the property market. It's demonetizing the fine art market. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. So anything you hold as an asset, it's the purchasing power relative Bitcoin is going to go down. And um, so this is the realization that's creeping into the minds of folks who have been observing Bitcoin for a while, the political class is really interesting to see so many politicians up here talking about Bitcoin. They have the talking points, and they sound good. 
Uh, I don't think they've given it a deep thought yet because it disintermediates politicians. Because not only will the central banks be disintermediated by Bitcoin, but so will the nation state as we know it. So the nation state will dissolve as well as the central banks. And we'll have a new, and we already see this in El Salvador. President Bukele is already looking to the future of a decentralized governance model that's no longer going along with the 300-year tradition of the central bank model that we were used to. He's decentralizing. People call President Bukele a dictator. No dictator would give his people the ability to own Bitcoin, an unconfiscatable give, asset that gives you self-sovereignty. That's the opposite of a di dictator. You know, Bitcoin is a magic mirror. And if you are of good character, it makes you even a better character. If you're a bad character, it makes you a worse character. If you look at somebody like a Craig Wright, the Bitcoin magic mirror revealed that he's a true scumbag, <laughs> right? If you're somebody like a Michael Saylor, the Bitcoin mirror exposed somebody with a high degree of integrity and a passion for education and a an deep understanding of Bitcoin. Same thing in the political class. You know, you have a Cynthia Lummis who I think you can say gets it. You know, she's been orange pilled and she's working hard in politics to make positive things happen. Other people in politics who talk about Bitcoin will find out soon enough whether or not they're just being narcissistic, self-serving assholes or whether they are genuinely hardcore Bitcoin or maximalists. You know, you know, nobody is. I love the honest speak. I, I actually like the energy of someone just speaking how they feel and just speaking how they want and coming out and saying what they believe to be true. Um, regardless of if it is actually true or not, I, I love the energy of people just being able to express themselves and their feelings without the need for these filters and the, you know, like to the fear of judgment or backlash and things like that. I feel like more people just need to be open and able and willing to just have simple dis conversations and discussions and to just speak on things. It's very, very important. Um, self-expression is, and, um, I love hearing people talk who you know they're not, they don't care about being canceled on the internet. Like, that, that's, that's dope to me. Escapes the guillotine. You know, Bitcoin is the new guillotine of the 21st century. All the toffs who are posing and not really worthy of the power that they get, you know, you're gone. Goodbye, Bye. have a nice day. You're going to be disintermediated, and you're going to zero. Come on down to El Salvador. You're welcome anytime, uh, Donald Trump, and look and observe how Bitcoin country operates and works. It'll be an inspiration. I know Don Jr. has been to El Salvador, and he's buying property in El Salvador. He's had great yeah. meetings with the president. And uh, the Gates has been to El Matt Salvador. Gates. Matt yeah. Gates, you know, he's buying property. All the smart money is going to El Salvador. All the smart politicians are going. So it's only a matter of time before the orange pill drops and the Donald makes his way to San Salvador. Come on down and visit for a week or two and get to know the country. And I think, you know, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And um, a lot of people who visit end up living there. And the opportunities are fantastic. We're opening up a Bitcoin bank soon. So you'll be able to borrow against your Bitcoin, buy some property. And you've got both a rise in the property price plus your Bitcoin at the same time. Plus you've got a brilliant place to live. Plus building is about 150 dollars per square foot which is about 90 percent cheaper than you find anywhere else so you've got the bank for the bank for the bank for your for your bitcoin so it's really the opportunity of a lifetime meanwhile recent movements in bitcoin and ethereum etfs reflect shifting investor sentiment and market dynamics u.s listed spot bitcoin exchange traded funds experienced 18 million dollars in net outflows on tuesday ending a four-day inflow streak that saw $124 million enter these funds. This shift came after Bitcoin prices, which had surged to over $69,000 last week amid anticipation of Donald Trump's speech at the Bitcoin 2024 conference, retreated. Trump's speech, which included plans to fire SEC Chair Gary Gensler and propose a strategic Bitcoin reserve, initially boosted prices but was followed by a 5% drop on Monday due to the U.S. Marshals Service transferring $2 billion worth of Bitcoin to new wallets, raising concerns about potential liquidation. Conversely, Ethereum ETFs saw a modest rebound with $33 million in net inflows, marking only the second such increase since their inception on July 23rd. Despite this, Ether ETFs have faced substantial cumulative net outflows exceeding $400 million. Grayscale's ETH-E has incurred significant losses totaling $1.84 billion, 
while BlackRock's ETHE stands out with $618 million in inflows. Looking ahead, traders are cautious, anticipating volatility in Bitcoin's market tied to upcoming US tech earnings and other macroeconomic events. QCP Capital highlighted that key events, including the FOMC meeting, major tech earnings from companies like Apple, Amazon, and Meta, and unemployment data will likely influence Bitcoin's price movements. The firm advises maintaining a range trading outlook for Bitcoin amid these uncertainties. As we conclude, what are your thoughts on this interview? Could the United States follow in the footsteps of Salvador? What would be the implications of global Bitcoin adoption, in your opinion? Let me know what you all think. Do you all think that we're going to see global Bitcoin adoption? I think that it's inevitable. I think that tech is going to be the way to go. And I don't think that people are going to go from like the dollar to some government made thing. Like it's, I, I don't believe that that's going to be the case. I think that it more than likely will be Bitcoin, Bitcoin that ends up winning out in the end. Um, it's the most trusted, most popular, and it's the source It's where it all began. Um, I think that is going to be the equivalent to gold. Now, will s there be dollars that branch off and make their own waves? Like, I mean, who knows? I, I, but I don't know. I, I know that there you can't you probably can't go wrong holding Bitcoin regardless of what happens. So that's why I think that this, this is a huge opportunity right now in this in this day and age. So, yeah, let me know what you all think. Let me know how you all feel in the comment section down below. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.